Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all know what it is, man. It's Tinkerbell, bitch. Know that, know that. And I'm here with Jimbo crossing the street. Know that. <laughs> Life was flowing fast, but yeah. I changed up when yeah. I hit the plate. Uh, Falling uh, in and out of love, and it's money never waits. Nope. Feel the walls closing in, right and getting clear to me. Uh -huh. Things ain't always what they seem or what they may appear to be. Uh -huh. Smoking uh -huh. needs a nigga mind. Rolling up banana leaves. Roll up. The city Roll where up. our brain got me in which you say it. What is good? I am here with Tinkerbell. What's yeah, happening? It's what's Tinkerbell, good? bitch. Hey, know that, know that. Should have known. Uh, um, we're out here to St. John's today. Yes, Central sir. Park. Yes, beautiful, sir. Beautiful, nice spot, yeah. man. Picked a great place. Man. Brought you a gift. You got the official cross the street okay. tea. Here's okay. a little dro dro for you, Tuda. Yes, sir. Phone. I know you brought your I own like smoke that. today, but I did. I did. You know. Yeah. You can save it for home or whatever. You I am. Do. I am. I'm about to put this in the bag. Hey. You got to put it Look, in. He's the got bag. the dope little bag. He's seen. Oh yeah, I got a lot of bags. bags. <laughs> man, this is my weed bag, but I got a lot of little bags and stuff. You see my man Tink in the streets. Know that he's got the weed in the bag. Bro, I got a bag. <laughs> I just know I'm always gonna go get a bag, and I got a bag. I got a gift for you. Oh, from, word from oh, my snap. home garden. Oh, from the home garden. Yeah, I have grew uh, several six to ten foot plants this year. Um, oh, shit. This right here is Big Smooth. Big That's Smooth, this is grown by you. Grown by me, right in the backyard. I'll give a little review of this. Yeah, thing for please sure. do. Oh, my goodness. Lovely. You can smell it through the bag before you even look in it. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. Big Thank smooth. you, man. That's a great gift. I appreciate you. I've been growing that strand for like, I don't know, two, the last two, three years. Is that something that you're into? I grow for tranquility and peace. <laughs> like, like, ah. like it's, it's a very therapeutic situation for me. You know what I mean? Like, we have a few guests on the show that are plant friendly. Craig Doby's a big plant guy. Okay. Um, so it's pretty common, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, we just got a short chance to chop it up for before we all started here, and I was telling him, uh, Neverland, great project. Thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, it's doing well. I got like 17,000 streams, organic streams, let me say that, off of uh, Spotify. I don't really know what my account is on YouTube yet or my account for Apple Music or Tidal or mm -hmm. Amazon or any of that. I was on Spotify listening today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Thank you for the spins. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no, yeah. I listened to the whole album. And I, again, I was... Uh, Listen to it about two or three times before it finally hit me one time. I was like, A and P party, right? Ain't no party. Ain't a no party. Uh -huh. I said, is that TK? And sure enough, it was old TK. Man, TK. Four Boy. five kings. Shout out to my niggas Gray and TK, man. This is my, my young cousins, man. I love them niggas. Do you and have me a... and TK is actually cousins. So like, like blood cousins. Like blood cousins. Yeah, yeah. My daddy and his mama are cousins. Wow. First cousins. So yeah. Yeah, I give uh, I give those guys a lot of credit for the the DJ Berg project that they just put out. I'm really really bro, excited. Bro, Berg is hitting them hard right now, Ooh. bro. You see these videos that they've been putting out Northwest. back to back. Yeah, man. Shout out to been, Northwest. They've been doing some things. Yes, sir. I love the that uh, Harriet Tubman song is my favorite on that album. I Word. love that. Word. Yeah. Man, they got a lot of great songs. I can't even think of all the titles. <laughs> I just listen to the stories people tell and the content of their raps. No, you really? know what I mean? Like, like, I come from a generation, like, I look young. I'm 34, but I look young. I come from a generation of people where you went to the studio and you actually had to rap, you know? Like, back when me and James first met, uh, and he was doing this Ball City thing, he had the office over on for Water Avenue, and we used to go there. We called it the Meth Lab. What year was this? This was hmm, about... 12 years back, thir about wow. 12, 12, 13 and, years and back. And when you speak of James, you're talking to Champagne James. Champagne, right? yeah. yes. Shout out to Champagne. No, I'm talking about S. James. S. James. I'm talking about what? S. James. Uh, yeah, sermon. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, he met me uh, years back, a uh, friend of ours, uh, Mac and HD. Yes. Shout out to Mac and been on Mac the show and as well. Mac and HD, another yeah. longtime friend from right here in the north. Right you here. Know? Uh, he, he saw me at the Copper Penny and whatnot. Here, we can keep walking. Yeah. He saw me at the Copper Penny, and I was with my cousins, uh, Josh Manus and Gonzo. You know what I'm saying? Money Rocket and Gonzo. We had, they also, my little cousins, asked me to join their group, and it was called SGA, Spark Gang Assassins. Ooh. And we were doing our thing there. I was, you know, doing my thing, rubbing elbows, and one day Mackin came up to me and was like, yo, I got somebody you got to meet. Brought James to me. And then... We chopped it up. He came and found me at Max Rave. <laughs> I was working there. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm learning that What the hell? Hey, bro, like, hey, I'm, job's I'm, a job. I'm an equal opportunist, okay? <laughs> if there's some money to go get, I'm going to go get it. They paying, I'm taking. Man, so, like, we went to, uh, he came in there, and I was on the, I told him, I worked at Max Rave. I said, bring me some flyers. He didn't believe me. So he was like, I'm on my way. Came there and found me on top of a ladder fixing, like, some signage and stuff. And he was like, so you just, like, really work here, huh? I was like, yeah. He was like, in a girl's clothing store. I was like, yeah. Who would you rather have tell you that you look good in something? A straight man or uh, another woman who probably wants the same outfit and gonna be like, girl, put that back. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so they hired me. Uh, yeah, that's how I got the job at Forever 21, too. You got retail experience in. I got a lot of customer service experience. I've been to everything from retail sales and clothing to Wetzel Pretzel, to security at Ross, to TSA security at the airport, oh, wow. working at the eye clinic and the, at the VA hospital and stuff. So like, you know, I've done a lot. Yeah. I've done a lot in my several years of life. So originally from Portland, you went to, would you say high, Grand High School? I went to Jefferson. Jefferson High School. Shouts Demos, to the Democrats. I say, you know. You know, shouts to the Democrats. Yeah, no, nah, yeah. but I, I was born and raised out here in St. John's right off of Wall Street. Uh, between Pheasant and Lombard. My first Portland home was 15th and Pheasant and Portsmouth. Word so, up, yeah. word up, yeah. So I was like right there, you know. You go to Clarendon? I went to Clarendon. Yeah. Uh, I left Clarendon, went to Whitaker for one year. Got right. kicked out of Whitaker from my magnet program for fighting and sent back to the north. So then I went to Portsmouth. <laughs> <laughs> sent back to the north. <laughs> then I went to Roosevelt on like one day and it was for when they show you like the high school you're supposed to go to and stuff. And then I saw them take a kid, put him in the trash can and roll him down the stairs. What? And I said, you know what? I'm liable to kill somebody if I go here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and go to Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> they seem like more sensible people over there. <laughs> like, yeah, man. So you have early involvement. So when you were going to Jeff there, um, the Salvation Army there, the kids the Sal, all man, the you Sal, guys all refer to as the, the Sal. The Sal was like it was like a training ground for this era of Portland hip hop. You know, what I mean, I was one of those early cats in there messing with Big Game James Mason and a lot of other cats. Uh, but me, Ted Loke, and Gil Gates, we put out Gil a mixtape. Oh, you did? Oh, the 503 mixtape. It was a, a PC mob situation. Is that like, still available somewhere? Uh, if you can find it, somebody got wow. a copy of the Somebody Shut got a copy of the mixtape. You might want to ask Ted. He might have it Man, in his repertoire. I, I just seen Ted yesterday. Man, Ted and Gil are two of my homeboys, but they are great at file keeping. Because they'll keep some stuff from way back and bring it out on you like, yo, you remember this? Like, I think we did, I think we did a re Welcome to Atlanta remix. Uh, there and it was welcome to Portland and I used every high school I can think of in Portland and made a bar for every high school uh, for my verse that was cool I was a Madison senator mm. I went to Madison that was in there yeah <laughs> I was in All there those PIL schools baby. man every one of them <laughs> but nah I love working with them cats them cats really like we really got involved we was using what not not sonar what is it cool edit pro at the time and fruity loops wasn't fruity loops studio fruity loops was just fruity loops we could just, right. make just make beats we had the big triton in there we had the rolling in there we had all the access to anything we ever needed and you know we had good mentors in there at the time to keep us from doing dumb shit we would be in there the amount of, like you were saying, the amount of people that, that were involved in the Sal program, I, I think they, they, you guys might not all realize yeah. how much of a mecca Bro, center the, that was. The how La many Fam artists are La out Familia there? Familia gang, all of the brothers. Yeah, you the know Cordetta JC, brothers, JC and Timmy, all of them, and Timmy Swiggle. and Swig. Man, yeah. Swiggle, Swiggle, Swiggle is an interesting person, man. I love Swiggle to death because he's always been just him. Like he ain't never been like, like he never fit in a group, but a group always fit around him. You see what I'm saying? No, I like totally there's, agree there's, with you. There's yeah. people who are born to lead. And he was one of the young individuals. He ain't but a couple years younger than me. You know what I mean? But me and him chopped it up one time. He was telling me about that song I was talking about. He's like, yeah, I came in there and heard you say that one time. And I listened to the song and you went through like every, I was like, you know what? I'm going to be a rapper. And walked yeah. off. Like, I was like, yo, that's fucking hilarious. Let's see but if we can yeah, get down no. here by this wall over here. Yeah, Let's come go on. check this out. We can keep walking. Yeah. And this is a um, beautiful park, man. I used to sit right here and look under the bridge, and that bridge would be like my gateway to getting out. I can imagine you could sit down here and write some music probably yeah, quietly by man. yourself. I and, came back yeah. here, and I got a song on my uh, SoundCloud. I'm about to release it through 
Spotify and stuff, but right now it's free. It's free on SoundCloud. You can go look it up, and it's called Rich or Right. And I called it that because I love an author named Richard Wright. And oh, okay. he has a, a, a book called Black Boy. If you have never written, read this book, go out there, find it, go to Powell Books or wherever you got to go, Richard Wright, Black Boy. It's a very famous book. But it was so moving and motivational to me just as an African-American young man, even though there's, there, it takes place back in the day through segregation and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Like, it was moving to me. And so when we came up before the Black Lives Matter stuff and all of that, I was sitting there looking at my people. I was living on 125th and Powell. And I came back over here to the north because I was writing a song. I got a, a beat from my guy, Fax Murder, AKA Rich James. Shout out to Rich Shout James. Shout out to Rich James. We're gonna he showed up on your album, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's there yeah. a couple times because yeah. he produced, a, like, I produced probably 80%. And then I have Rappy Dooski on Get It Back. Shouts to You rap. know, he, he produced that beat with the hook. Right. Um, then I got Rich on several other songs. Fuck Love is a Rich James beat. Like, Ooh, yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, what else? Believe It is a Rich James beat. Um, and he uh, even raps on a couple of the yeah, songs too. Yeah, right? he sings. He sings. He, sings. Oh, he, sings. Sorry, he did yeah, his yeah. R and B thing. He didn't rap this all time. Right, all right. He told me he ain't gonna rap no more. I said, <laughs> not if I can help it. <laughs> but no, but uh yeah, no, I put him um yeah, he me and him work together a lot. Actually we have a juice come, or he has a juice, it's called juiced. It's a lemonade, pink lemon or he has a strawberry lemonade, a regular lemonade. Uh we in you know, connection with the another artist named C Smooth. Gotta look him up. C Smooth, okay. C Smooth. Yeah, on if you look on the Got Neverland it. playlist, uh, he's on there a few times. Okay. You know what I mean? All right, but, uh, we'll do. Yeah, so C Smooth, he gets there and he did he has an island punch under the Deuce Company. Uh, I have a cherry limeade soon to come out within the next two weeks. Ooh. You know, under there. My face all over it and say Tinker Bell bitch. Cherry uh. limeade. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, also, we working together on the seasoning because he has a food company. It's called Big Eats. Every Wednesday, they do the flight lounge, uh, dinner and a movie. Um, and yeah, so, you know, Big Eats is Big Eats is doing this thing. Rich James is doing this thing. Shout out to Rich James, man. He's, yeah. he's taught me a lot, too. Uh, but yeah, man, no, nah, we've done several things on that project, man. I just, I kind of wanted to give people, I kind of wanted to give people the feel of my, first of all, me being able to do any kind of style, any kind of thing I want to. Second of all, I want to have fun again. I don't think all no. the time you got to be shooting at people and doing all that. Like, listen, not everybody wants to shoot people. It was the goddamn 15 shootings on Friday. This is That's too much. Stupid. Yeah. And one of the biggest turnarounds we've seen in our city since the early 90s um, in, in violence. So. This shit looked like Oakland. <sighs> Right now, we are literally the baby bay, and it's it's ridiculous. Like, body counts need to go down, money count need to be going back up. Look at that. Some People right. can't have fun. Port Some right. Portland sucks. <laughs> really? Yeah. Portland sucks? Well, y'all ain't been here long. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you didn't realize, damn near almost everything is legal here. <laughs> like, 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 so I don't know how we can suck. For real, you know name one thing you can't do here. Man, there's <laughs> opportunity here. They read that they decriminalized less than an ounce of cocaine. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like 14, seven, I think it's less than seven grams. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you have less than seven grams decriminalized, they damn near got MDMA legal. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. damn near like, like it's, it's a lot. You can already grow weed in your house. Well, you could grow you grow, weed I mean, at home. <laughs> this Look, what I did when I grew my weed was completely <laughs> under the spectrum. Like, you know, it was completely fucking legal. How are you? <laughs> it's a big no, it was completely legal. That's what I like about the North. Everybody's friendly. You just say, "Hey, how you doing?" You know, oh, Portland. I've been here. My, my mom whole from life. Mississippi, so oh, like okay. down there, they used to be like, my auntie. She'll come up to me if you didn't say that to her. She say, "Did I sleep with you last night?" And you'd be like, "Uh, no." <laughs> She's like, "Well, then you need to say hello or <laughs> good morning or say something." So. Usually when I pass by people or people are walking past me, I might give them a hey or say what's nah, going man. on. Because ain't nothing wrong with that. You I'm might make Portland. somebody's day. You know how it goes. Being from Portland, someone's yeah. always waving or saying Yeah, hi. but yeah, I mean, yeah. somebody could be going through a bad day. You could change somebody's day just by saying hello and Very letting true. them know that they're a person and they there. That like, leads me into a cool little segue. I'd like to take a moment to recognize men's mental health. I think it's important. Um, 
any men out there struggling with their feelings, don't be afraid to reach out to a confidant and right. speak up. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah, man, but... What well, else do you do besides music? I'm, this question's like haunting for people. Man, what do you mean? Like I, just, like I said, I'm... You, you read, it sounds like you're a big reader. Uh, I'm not a big reader, but I read things that interest me. You know what okay. I mean? And besides doing music, like I said, I have, the, I have several different things. I'm starting a sandwich company. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, well, I'm helping start a sandwich company, I should say, because I'm not going to run it. I'm not going to have too much to do with the business of it. But I'm going to get it up and running. It's called Simple Sandwiches. It's going to be cool. Uh, it's just going to be like, you know, order online, Postmates. Oh, send dope. It straight to your door. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? But the sandwiches is like this thick. they real hearty. You're probably only going to finish half. So, you know, that's going to be a good look. Uh, got the seasoning, James Ray seasoning. is Me and Rich James, we came up with a seasoning company. We got a seasoning coming out called Holy Trinity. After that, I got a barbecue rub coming out, coming under the James Ray. <laughs> and then, you know, the juice. Like, you know, cherry limeade is the start. Then I'm thinking about doing a watermelon lemonade. And, like, like you know, like, it's, it's just, it's an endless amount of things that we can do. Like, you know, it's so much money out here to get. And, it took a pandemic to show people that you don't got to work for nobody. Nobody. If you have an idea, you put that idea on paper and take one step, another step, and another step, and another step, and next wow. thing you know, you're making some money and you can pay a bill or two. You know what I mean? Oh, you nailed it. I think the recreation of people during the quarantine has been amazing. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, it always takes, like, some big-ass disaster for people to realize that shit got to change. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, it's ridiculous, but that's history, you know, from everything from the Renaissance to, to the Great Depression. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? No, right after, truth. it's a big-ass boom, and a bunch of shit is going on. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, that's pretty much what we, I feel like we're going through that in the hip-hop and rap. You know what I'm saying? It was, it's damn near a Great Depression, because everybody is saying the same depressing-ass shit. You know? My mama told me a long time ago. She said, listen, don't be a nigga be a black man there's a difference and I said well I'm not exactly what I want to be in life or where I should be on a straight and narrow you know like my brother my brother Donnell is one of my biggest inspirations don't I hope he don't see this I'm saying my brother Donnell is one of my biggest inspirations my brother Donnell has been has done everything right he went to college U of O graduate shout out to the oh, Ducks because you know that's my football team I love them <laughs> but he graduated from college. He, you know, found a wife. They together put their minds together and set a goal. Now he just bought his second house that he had built. Big as shit. I'm just trying to get there. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Me, I ain't really been on my path go like this. <laughs> you, know, you know, I'm not, I've been the regular person to just go to school and stuff like that. I want to get down to this doc. I know we got a little Let's bit of time. Let's go, we got time. Yeah, yeah but you know what I'm saying? But no, I, I've not been that person. Actually, you know what? Uh, no, nah, I think it's path down here too. But yeah, no, nah, uh, I've never been that kind of person and whatnot. So uh, my path ain't been as straight as his, but I look at him for inspiration when I want to strive to achieve things because any goal he has ever set, he really has achieved those. So like me, I set different goals. I went down different paths. I like to tiptoe in the dark and then slide over to the light and then tiptoe <laughs> back in the dark, you know what I mean? But like, I'm gonna get there, but as long as I got him in front of me, we only 14 months apart. Oh, okay. He bigger than me. If you've seen us together in the face, you'll be like, yeah, they brothers. <laughs> the way we act, you'll be like, yeah, they brothers. But other than that, you'll be like, yo, where did he get all of this? And you're like, itty bitty piece of dynamite. <laughs> like, like, like. <laughs> You know. I heard someone say something the other day. We all only get one human existence. One. Um, and it kind of like changed me a little bit. Just thinking how I experience my human existence and how you experience yours. But do you believe that e to be true? Let's, let's hope not. Because. Let's, let's hope not. I don't let's know. Sometimes not. you, people call it deja vu. They be like, oh, I've done this before. So if we were to really have only one human existence, then why the hell have you done something that you have never done before? Let me tell you this. This is probably the first time on the show we've done this. It's the first time on the show we've ever Get crossed, to walk down the, crossed track. the tracks. Got to cross the tracks. <laughs> yeah, I grew up on the east side of the tracks, man. These are the real train tracks, baby. 
They go straight through the hood too, and the train do come through here. Yeah, a lot it ain't of like shit the, too. it ain't like them alleyways and streets where the train come through and you see the tracks, but it's all cemented around it and the train really don't come through there no more. This one actually crossed through the north. Like if we stay down here long enough, it takes us about thirty minutes to get back. Because, That's right, because it goes by and make right. a bunch of goddamn racket too. Man, yeah, rattle the shit out of here. Uh, let's see, let's go down this way, the dock over there. All right. Yeah, man, but no. Uh, I wrote the song Black Man here. I wrote Fuck Love here, parts of it. Uh, I come here a lot of the times just to sit. It's a very peaceful place. You get to see, you know, little animals and stuff running around. You know, the water's right here. And when you think about rapping, everybody call it a flow. They call it a flow because it's supposed to flow. That's the you flow. know what I mean? Regardless of how your change-ups come, it needs to flow one thing into another. The story has to be told beginning to end. People have to understand it. All of the mumble shit that came out, cool. That's tight. You know what? Y'all little niggas is getting it. But other than that, I want to hear what you had to I, say. I say listening to your music, you're what I like to classify as a rapper rapper. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, I'm, a, I'm a lyricist and lyricist, a storyteller. Yeah, yeah. You know? Storyteller. I'm a lyricist and a storyteller because, like, I don't know. People's story need to be told. And sometimes when you're trying to reach the masses and talk to the masses and tell them stories and stuff, you know, you wanted to connect to them in a personal manner. You know what I mean? So you have to really touch different emotions and different different switches in their body for them to connect with the music. But I mean, every time I put out something, I'm not gonna put out nothing that's like four tracks. Like, I don't even believe in EPs. Like, because every time I listen to something, I went to the store to get a CD or a tape, because I was still alive. What's up with it, boss? Chilling. But no, nah, but like, uh, I went to the store to get CDs and tapes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My first project was called Tape Deck Music, actually. I never put it out. Some of the songs that's from Tape Deck Music ended up on the Neverland album, you know? And I wasn't always Tinkerbell Bitch. I used to be AP to CEO of the streets. But one day, James was like, bro, what you talk about <laughs> doesn't match up with you unless people know you, but everybody knows you. And I was like, yeah, everybody know me. <laughs> and he was like, but you got to come up with a brand. You got to come up with your name. So Tinkerbell came around when I was, like, it was the end of my days of strip club DJing. I'll tell you about that, too. That's funny. Yeah, shouts to Rappy Dooski. Rappy out, he, Dooski, he just man. just put a post up looking, Honestly, for, looking for some DJs for a club. Rappy Dooski is at the club that I was trained at on how to DJ, but not by Rappy, by sure. a different, different DJ. Um but yeah, that's where I started, Cabaret 2. And then I went to Jody's. Jody's was like my home bar. I would go there every day, drink a pitcher of beer, chill with the, the owner and or the owner's son and the owner's daughter. And you know, like we would we would kick it. You know what I mean? But they one day said, Hey man, you want a job? I said, Yeah, why not? <laughs> like, like, and so then they said, Was that fun? Bro, years went past me. <laughs> I DJ there. I DJ at another place called Hotties. It's the Exposed now. But uh, me and James got it. Well, James, okay. How do I put this? Champagne James decided that Champagne James was bored. Champagne James, I was living with him at the time. He came back to the house. He said, hey, I got us. We got a job. I said, huh? He said, we got a job. I said, what you mean we got a job? I didn't go interview for shit. He go, he go, well, I got a job as a strip club DJ. You know how to strip club DJ. I have no idea what I'm doing. So I want you to come and kind of let me apprentice you, but I'm going to be working, but you're going to be showing me what to do. I say, all right, cool, whatever. And so then we came up with the idea of tantum DJing, meaning that there's always a DJ there because once one DJ go on a smoke break or want to go have a drink or whatever, Ooh. he just go and do that. And you then after that, to make the evening yeah. be relaxed and exactly. working. Exactly. And yeah. after that, you know, we was DJing at Hotties until they shut that motherfucker down. You know, so it Sorry. was cool. We out here on the dock. Look at this. Yeah, man, I took many great Facebook pictures here. Look at this great. This man, look nice. at my bridge. You got to get my bridge. Look at this. We are here. That is the St. John's Bridge, people. You cross that, you coming into the north. I don't know who canoe this is. This is how you got here, don't lie. I did never <laughs> came there. I can swim and I go fishing and hunting all the time. I can't oh, swim. Why not? Don't get me in the water, I'm dead. <laughs> I had to learn how to swim because I like fishing. And so if I'm not fishing, 
and you know, out in the woods and whatnot, because I really do that. Like I, re- people. Like, Why don't we oh. tell about that? Your dad is that you and your father, right? Yeah, yeah you and your father. Yeah, and me and my dad. Uh, yeah. My dad came up with an idea after he retired for the African American Hunting Association, and that was just to get minorities involved in, uh, you know, like getting out in the woods, you know, getting back to our heritage, as he calls it, you know, our okay. hunting heritage. And so yeah. we came up with that. We started filming our adventures. Like, you know, there's a pheasant hunt on there. There's a couple deer hunts, uh, elk hunt, uh, a bunch of fishing stuff, you know, like things of that nature. And trying to reach out to minorities and just say, hey, we out here. We came from the woods. We used to hunt. Now they want to talk about how dangerous we are with guns. Shit. Why? It's our right to have them. We just worry about what we're doing with them and use them more constructively. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. I'm going to keep saying that because, like I said. Look at that. I'm like, gonna, I like a little, a little piece sleeping there. Someone's sleeping there. Oh, yeah. Bro, you ain't know it? They be out here. Uh-huh. Like, like you know people think one? that this homelessness problem is what they call it. This, no, this is resourcefulness at its, its greatest. It's saying yeah. we can't make enough <coughs> to live indoors. <coughs> Ooh, back of that big <laughs> got, got <coughs> um, We got about two, three minutes left on the show here. You want right. to um, show some love, give some Man. shout outs, PSA. Right. Shout out to 45 Kings. Jeez. Shout out to BPE, you know, my little brother brothers. Um, shout out to everybody I work with, man. Everywhere from cool nuts, from riding, being my inspiration when I was young, riding around with a van with your face on it. Like, yeah, I remember that. Maniac Loke fan. Maniac. He grew up still okay. to this day. Huge Dre maniac. Steves. That's a homie of mine, too. But shout, shout, to out, shout out to the whole Ball City family, man. I'm talking about Tyreka, Hollywood. I'm talking about Portland Tie. I'm talking about Champagne. I'm talking about even my aviator brother, Tabi OJ. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to all of them. Shout out to Rich James. And, man, shout out to all my little youngins, man, everybody who's doing this shit. If y'all doing this shit, do this shit right, man. Let's just get it in. Let's have fun. Let's work together. I don't care where you come from. But if you're from this north side, we need to do this north side stuff. I'm talking to Hype. I'm talking to v- Vinny. I'm talking to everybody from the north. I mean, I know we had a battle rapper out here. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to say his name, but you know who he is. You know what I'm saying? He came right from the woods. I'm just going to say it like that. But, man, we out here, man. There's a lot of people coming from the north, and we need to get together and do this thing. Return to Neverland coming, too. Hey. <laughs> get that Neverland shit, man. This has been great having you on the show. Thank you so much for Thank your you, time. Man. Uh, Thank you, bro. You know, this is the first podcast I, podcast I did in a long-ass time, except for uh, Lance. Last with Lance. Shout out to Lance Edwards. Shout out to D-Wade, my brothers from the five families, man. I love y'all. What are you going to do the rest of the day? Man, I'm going to go do some dad shit. And then I'm going to go <laughs> do some music shit. Then I'm going to go fix up this recipe for the sherry limeade so I can get it to y'all. But come out on Wednesdays because you you'll only find it at Big Eats, nigga. Um, Dinner I'm, and a movie. I'm about to go home and forget my first name. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, friend. Great yes, having sir. you. Salute. <laughs>